I know it's here somewhere. Finally, finally. Oh, it's time for the duck. You're listening to Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. Ah, take it away, doctor. Well, it's that time again, and the doctor is in. It's time once again for Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. And the whole studio is a mess. It's the biggest mess it's been in years. Everything in here is wonky. But we'll do a show anyway. Somehow, some way, we'll do a show. Because I'm just that dedicated. We are proud members of the Tech Podcast Network, techpodcast.com. If it's tech, it's right here on Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon. Yes, my camera is too low. You are looking up my nose. Not exactly a great angle, I know, but it's the best I could do with the whole mess in here. And I'm talking major, big time mess. Arrgh. I had many issues. First, latter part of last week, and the first of all, next, the following week, which was this past week before this week. Whatever I mean. Anyway, at some point, I was fighting off symptoms of stuffiness and rough throat and things of that nature, and now I'm past that, which is a good thing. Feeling better, at least in the sense of that kind of feeling better. But I'm not feeling better about my wonderful Canon T3i camera. No, it didn't break. I didn't drop it. <laughs> I knew Fred was going to say that, so I beat him to it. No. However, I do a video show, as is obvious by the video that you are watching. And the camera is designed to be a still camera. Now you might say, yes, Dr. Bill, it is a still camera. What did you expect? Well, I expected it to do video longer than 10 minutes. Which, you know, for last week's show worked out okay. It was only 7 minutes long, but if you try to do a show longer than 10 minutes, it goes, okay, sorry, shutting down now. Because the CMOS gets too hot. If you are considering buying a DSLR camera, particularly the Canon T3i, which I will remind you is an awesome camera and I love it, still, it's not designed for video, okay? And so it won't do videos of the length of which I like to do, which is one continuous video as though you were sitting here in the studio with me talking to me, except I do all the talking. I like it that way. <laughs> yes, Fred, maybe it is a little bit too much ego, but what are you going to do? Anyway, so much as I regret to do so, I am sending it back. <laughs> I know. I'm so sad about it. It's got me down, dude. Dude and duet, dudettes, if there's any dudettes out there watching. Anyway, so I'm sending it back. I'm sad about that. But I am getting a new camera. You knew I couldn't stand not to get a new camera. So I'm getting the Canon HFM50. Stay tuned for that. I'm taking the money that I had in the T3i and putting it into that. And it's been ordered and it's being shipped in. So, and it's got some features that are going to be really, really cool for this show. So, hang in there. Okay, so I obviously didn't get to do a show on Saturday for various reasons. First, I didn't feel well. Second, I was having camera issues. Third, I was having camera issues. And fourth, I was having camera issues. <laughs> so it didn't get, it didn't happen Saturday. Okay. So it's happening today. This is a Monday. Monday evening, as a matter of fact. So that's how late I'm running with the show. Okay. 
First item, Chromecast development is now open. Like my eyes. <laughs> anyway, uh, yes, Google has opened Chromecast to all developers. They have published an SDK. Yes, and the, I was reading the article as I was preparing to talk. I saw there where it said you have to pay a $5 registration fee, and I went, whoa, $5, that's not bad, and it blanked my brain out. <laughs> yes, Fred, it does happen rather easily, doesn't it? Anyway, also, Asus has released a new device, as long as we're on the theme of Chrome. They released a new device called the Chrome Box. The Chrome Box, well, they call it the Chrome Box because Google released a specs for a device called a Chrome Box and Asus made it. Okay. Anyway, so Emily Price for Engadget writes in this article, as promised late last year, Asus unveiled its new Chrome Box, packing Intel's fourth generation Haswell processors today. This was on February 4th. The most compact Chrome box yet, the computer comes sporting either Intel Celeron 2955U or i3-4010 processor. Another i7 version of the box will be available outside of North America. What's up with us? I mean, why can't you release it to us? Sniff. Anyway. Under the hood of the Svelte 8 dot. <laughs> Excuse me. 4.88. I saw 8 and I just was enthralled by the 8-ness of it. 4.88 by 4.88 by 1.65 inch device. In other words, small. Okay. Slightly, roughly the size of a hockey puck except squarish. You'll get Intel Integrated HD Graphics and 16 gig of onboard storage if you need more room to store your stuff. Asus is offer also offering buyers 100 gig of free cloud storage through Google Drive. Goodness, which is just like the Chromebook that I got for Christmas. I like my Chromebook a lot. You know that. My finger is huge again because of the way the camera is seated setting. Also, it's highly lighting my hand, but not my face. Like I said, the studio's in a mess. I have plans to make it better, but not tonight. <laughs> okay, Facebook is 10 years old today. That is, on February 4th, it was 10 years old today. I apparently joined five years into the Facebook thing. So there you go. And they did a little movie thingy where you had movies of your past on Facebook. Mine was boring because I don't post a lot of photos. I just don't think anybody's that interested in seeing photos of me. You say, but Dr. Bill, you do a weekly video show. Surely you think people are interested in seeing photos. No. The video show, at least I'm talking about stuff that's of interest to techies. You don't want to see pictures of me opening a Christmas present. Unless it's a techie Christmas present, which, you know, I'm all about that. But anyway. So, 10 years old, dude. A decade of Facebook. Can we stand the strain? Announcing Crossover 13.1.0. Crossover, as you may or may not know, is the fully, fully... Poof, monetized and supported version of wine which as i've mentioned before is stands for wine is not an emulator and it really kind of is but it's not but it is but it's not yes but anyway crossover supports quicken 2014 because quicken is such a popular application they are releasing the version of crossover specially to provide our users support for the latest version of Quicken. Which is pretty cool, actually, that they would do that. So that's good. The next item is really cool. It is open source vehicles. Vehicle. That goes back, that whole saying it vehicle goes back to an episode of MASH. Where they had a guy who was like their their, what would you call it, 
I'm sure there's a military term for it, but basically the procurement guy for vehicles that they use, like Jeeps and so forth. Anyway, he was a southern dude, I think, and he said, vehicle. He said it wasn't a Jeep, it was a vehicle. So I picked that up, and I've been using it ever since, much to the chagrin of the Game Master, who rolls his eyes and wonders why his dad does strange things. Anyway, osvehicle.org for open source. Opensourcevehicle.org. They have invented or created or developed, you don't know how you'd want to say it, the Tabby, as it says on the screen. Tabby is basically an open source vehicle that you can build yourself in less than an hour, which is pretty cool. Um, and they have what another video, I have two videos, I have that video showing that they built it in less than an hour, and then I have another one that shows the Urban Tabby, which actually looks kind of cool. And it's the road legal version. And you can even get it with an electric engine, which I would like to try. That would be fun. I only live seven miles from work, so it'd be cool to actually drive to work in an open source vehicle that was electric. Dude, the geek points I would get out of that. I feel like I need more geek points. <laughs> oh well. Anyway. So, whoa! Yes, Fred, it is time for the Geek Solver of the Week. I was just about to say that. Good old Fred. He loves that Geek Software of the Week drum roll. He likes to play it. I think he has his own little virtual drum. Anyway, the Geek Software of the Week this week is Xerus, X-I-R-R-U-S, Xerus Wi-Fi Inspector. Now, it's actually a really cool free piece of software. You install it on a Windows box, and you can then scan your Wi-Fi network and find out if it is, you know, as powerful as you think it should be. Have the right wave length thing. And, and, and show the strength of it and all of those good things. And what other Wi-Fi networks are in the area and what frequencies and, and channels they're on in case you would benefit from changing your channel. Pretty cool idea. So it has, it, and this is, this is the high, simple tool for monitoring Wi-Fi networks, runs on Windows 7, Vista, or XP, and you have, of course, 8. Matter of fact, I'm running it on 8, so I know it works. Free of charge and easy to install software. Real-time monitoring of wireless network status, traffic, and clients. And detects rogue APs. Those are access points for those of you in Rio Linda. Okay, next item. Now the Chromebox thing, but this time it's Chromebox for meetings. They take the Chromebox we talked about earlier, they marry it with other stuff and software, and they create a video conferencing hardware and software platform called Chromebox for Meetings. It's $999 for the whole shebang all rolled together into one turnkey system. It'll be rolled out in the United Kingdom, Canada, Japan, Australia, France, New Zealand, and Spain. And the United States. <laughs> yes. I had to check on that. I was like, what? Not the United States, but yes, it is. So the move doesn't augur well for Google's rivals and the video conferencing hardware business. In other words, Cisco. They could have just said that. But anyway, it's cheaper and it's very high quality. Dude. That's pretty cool. All right, there's been a phenomenon. I always laugh when I say the word phenomenon because one of my dear fans out there that watched the show heard me talk about Manumanump, the Muppet thing. Manumanump, do 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 do, Manumanump, that. Okay. And I said, phenomenon, 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 one time. And he took the music and put it to me saying, phenomenon, phenomenon. <laughs> and it was cool. Let's listen to it now. <laughs> Phenomenon. 
Phenomenon. Phenomenon. Phenomenon. That's pretty neat. You gotta admit. Okay. Phenomenon. <laughs> what was I talking about? Oh, yeah. <laughs> this game was written by this guy in Vietnam called Flappy Bird. Not the guy, the game. And it's taken the world by storm. More or less. Anyway, the guy is, this is what's amazing to me. The guy is making $50,000 a day. Just this guy in Vietnam that wrote a stupid game. It's a very hard game. People play it and go, Arr! it's just too hard to play, and yet they play it. And basically, that's its popularity. They have all these people saying, you can't play it. Oh, yes, I can. Oh, no, you can't. Oh, then play it and show me. And people buy it. Well, or download it. I don't know if you actually even buy it, but he's making a ton of money. $50,000 a day, but being a good Vietnamese commie, no aspersions if you're a communist, sorry. <laughs> anyway, he basically is saying, it's too popular, I'm upset, I'm going to stop it. And so he's taking it down. So you, as of the time this aired, or hit the internet, his announcement on YouTube. He said he had, was going to give it 24 hours, then he was going to take the game down. Because it was too popular, and he couldn't take the strain. Dude, if I was making $50,000 a day, you know, say what you will, I would make the $50,000 a day. You know what I'm saying? But then I am a capitalist. <laughs> a capitalist swine, some have said. Yeah, go with what's true, you know? Just say it. <laughs> anyway, <coughs> I'm sorry for the coughing. Ah, occasionally something jumps up into my throat and goes, bah! And, and I have to deal with it. <laughs> if my mic is too loud, and I think it is just a bit too loud, particularly when I cough really loud like that, I'm sorry. But the whole setup here is completely wrong. I'm going to have it fixed for the weekend. And it's hot in here. Because of all the lights. It's just one of those days. You know what I'm saying? Even the hat's making me hot. So. So, Flappy Bird. Goodbye, Flappy Bird. We barely knew ye. <laughs> On Saturday, as of... The Saturday I should have been recording the show, so this past weekend, da uh, Dong Win tweeted, I'm sorry, Flappy Bird users. 22 hours from now, I will take Flappy Bird down. I can't take this anymore. <laughs> that tweet has already racked up over 50,000 retweets. So what's the this that Win is referring to? Owen oh, Good of Kotaku, Kotaku says... It's likely the popularity of the game. Earlier this week, Wynn pleaded over Twitter for everyone to please give me peace. Saying the notoriety of a creative game is something I never wanted. To give you an idea of that notoriety, a report by The Verge on Wednesday said that the app, which displays mobile advertisements, that's how he makes his money, during gameplay brings in a whopping $50,000 a day. And the Los Angeles Times reports the game has been downloaded more than 10 million times. And that's just on Android devices. Hours before his announcement, Wynn seemed to be a little bothered by the popularity. He tweeted, I can call Flappy Bird a big success of mine, but it ruins my simple life, so now I hate it. Dude. <laughs> Make your $50,000 a day for as long as you can, and then enjoy life. You know what I'm saying? Okay, well, anyway, there you go. So, Flappy Bird flaps his last flap. <laughs> and I guess that'll do it for this show. Join us this weekend when hopefully everything will be better and I won't be having to stare down at you. Until then, remember that the doctor is out of here.
Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon is a production of DrBillBailey.net with all the honors, rights, and privileges thereunto appertaining.